that is who you are. 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 We make a Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Sister Fry, good morning, Brother Fry, good morning, Fry family, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good morning, Butler family, good morning, good morning, God bless you. Who you are. Listen, we don't own the rights to this music. We're just going to use it just a little bit. You know how we do. We get our praise on in the morning, amen. With the morning light, we get up and we glorify God. We magnify God. We thank God for his many, many, many blessings, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to see you, Brother Fry. Good to see you. Good to see you. Praise the Lord. That is who you are. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. That is who you are. Mm. Yes, Lord, that is who you are, that is who you are. Hey, praise the Lord, so good to see you this morning, family. We love all of you all, amen. We thank the Lord for you all, amen. If somebody could, if somebody would, please just type out there and let me know if I'm coming through loud and clear, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We're going to get a little bit more of that before we go, amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, amen. Let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer, and then we're going to open up, amen, with our worship this morning. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We are grateful for all of your many blessings. We thank you, Lord, for be, be, being a very present help in our times of need, we thank you, Lord, for your hand of mercy and protection. We thank you, Father God, because you have not only watched over us, but you have watched over our children and our children's children. Lord, we magnify you this morning, Father, because, O oh, Heavenly Father, while we were yet in sin, way far away from the peaceful shore, your son, Jesus Christ, died on a cross, shed his blood so that we might have a right to the tree of life. And Father, we thank you for that this morning, O oh Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up to see a brand new day. Father, we bless your holy name because this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we adore you and we exalt you right now, Father, for things being as well with us as they are. Lord, you continue, Heavenly Father, to put food and clothes, food in our mouth, clothes on our back, shelter over our head. Give us fresh running water right now. It's people can't even take a shower right now. Folks who are losing loved ones right now, God, and we pray for them right now in the name of Jesus that you will make ways where there seems to be no way right now, God. Lord, we bless you right now for those, O oh Heavenly Father, who have lost loved ones right now, that we grieve with them right now, God. We ask you to hold up their hands, strengthen them in your most holy faith right now. Be with them and console them. Comfort them right now in the name of Jesus right now, Lord. Those who are aching and in pain right now, Father, come in and be the great physician that you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Come in and be the great doctor that you are. You don't need a prescription pad and you don't need an OR room right now. Just move back and let the word of God.
God, come forth, for there is healing in your word. God, we bless your holy name this morning. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor in Jesus' name. Somebody ought to say amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the risen Lord this morning. Glory to God. I want to say happy Mother's Day. Amen. To all of our mothers who have logged in this morning, amen. Praise the Lord. This is an exciting, awesome, and amazing time right now. Well, God gives us another opportunity, another day, just to share time and space with our mothers, amen. We praise the Lord. And for those who have lost, amen, their mother, amen. We thank the Lord even for that opportunity of that mother being, my sister sent out a text this morning, that the mother, she has to wipe nose and, and cook food and She's the chief around the house. She keeps order and organization, amen. So that's a blessed word. I want to just bless. If you can this morning, if you don't mind, would y'all join me in telling all the mothers happy Mother's Day? Just type in your little, in your device and just tell them happy Mother's Day, amen. Praise the Lord. And while you do that, we got a word for them this man. Just, this is a word special for the mothers. Mothers, we love you this morning. And the word of the Lord comes to us today. Amen. This word for our mothers, this special Mother's Day moment comes to us from the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs chapter 31. The book of Proverbs chapter 31. It says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. The heart of a husband, he does safely trust in her so that she shall have no need. He will have no need of spoil. She going to do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax. She worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bring forth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night. And she gives meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considers a field and she buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she planted a vineyard. She girded her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceived that her merchandise is good and her candle goeth not out by night. Mm, that's a hard working woman right here. She laid her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretched out her hands to the poor, yea, she reached forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk with and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. So she maketh Fine linen, and she sells it and delivers girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor of her clothing. Put it on there, sister, and she shall rejoice in the time of calm. When she opened her mouth, she opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Mm, mm, mm. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and she eat not the bread of idleness. This sister ain't got time to be just sitting around doing nothing. Her children, they rise up and they call her, say, bless you, mama. Mm. And her husband, he praises her. Mm, Lord, have mercy. Many daughters have done virtually, but this one excels them all. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates and wherever she goes. My sisters, that's my blessed word for you today. You go on out there and be that virtuous woman and you turn the world around and upside down. God bless y'all. We love you, sisters. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We thank you again for all of our mothers. Uh, we love you so much. For my own dear mother, for my daughters, my sisters, amen, mother, my children, my wife, all, all of you. 
We thank the Lord for you. But there is a word from the Lord, amen, this morning. So if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to run with us over to the book of Colossians. I'm not going to try to hold you long this morning because I want you to go in honor. Let this day be an honor to your mothers and to honor all the mothers, amen. So I don't want to hold you too long, but there is a word from the Lord. If you got your Bibles, if you got your books, if you got your tablet, if you got your phone, whatever source of media device that you're using this morning, God bless you. God bless you, my sisters, amen. Good to see you, grandmother. Good to see you, sister Deborah. Good to see you, amen. Good to see you, everybody out there. I think I see sister Kathy out there. I see my cousin out there. God bless you. Hey, look, Camille. See Camille out there. God bless you. God bless you. We love y'all so much. Amen. Listen, go over to the book of Colossians, to the book of Colossians. We're going to look at chapter two. Now, uh, this study is going to carry us from verses uh, 11 all the way through 17. And it's specifically talking about how that Christ, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he is exalted over uh, legalism. He is exalted. The preeminence of Christ is exalted over legalism. The first uh, act, a legal act that he talks about is this act called circumcision. So this morning I want to talk to you about the preeminence of Christ's circumcision. The preeminence of Christ's circumcision. Amen. So we're going to pray for this word and then we're going to jump in and we're going to unpack this thing. All right. Let's pray. Father, this is your word. We are your people. We are the sheep of your pasture. So we're asking you to feed us till we want no more. Father, we pray for those who are sick and afflicted all over the land. We pray for constant healing, restoration, and recovery right now. In Jesus' mighty name, have your way this morning. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God again. So glad to see all of you. I want to say I love you so much. Good morning, Brother Ford. Good morning, Minister Ford. Listen, uh, y'all, I want you to continue to keep um, lifting up. Keep sending forth your prayers to those who are grieving, amen, to those families who are in the hour of bereft, amen, and uh, it is very important that we keep them lifted up, because there before the grace of God go you, go I. At any time, it could be us, so we certainly and indeed want to make sure that we keep the grieving families lifted up. We know that they laid to rest one of our own dear sisters, uh, amen, Sister Hernandez, amen, on yesterday. We know that God had called Sister Billie Jean, so and many, many others. And so we don't want to take this thing lightly to keep each other lifted up because this is a time, amen, where uh, many are going on. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the word of the Lord is in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 11. Amen. Chapter 2, verse 11. And I'm just going to read that one little verse and then we're going to get ready to unpack this thing. But that verse 11 says this. In whom also ye are circumcised. Amen. In whom also ye are circumcised uh, with the circumcision made without hands. Now get that. Because this morning we're going to talk about the preeminence of Christ's circumcision. Amen. What his circumcision does for us. Amen. It is in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. In putting off, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. And again, this lesson is going to carry us from verses 11 through 17. Amen. But how Christ, he, him being preeminent over all legalism. Amen. So historically, circumcision was a sign of God's covenant, was a sign of God's covenant with the Jewish people, amen? It started, amen, in the book of Genesis chapter 17. So this morning, if you will, we're going to take a little journey, amen, over to the book of Genesis chapter 17. So if you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn over there with me right quick. Genesis 17, verses 8 through 14. Genesis 17, verses 8 through through 14. Amen. And I'm going to read that. So just kind of listen. It starts like this. He, he's Now this is God talking to his servant Abraham. God is talking to Abraham. And he tells Abraham in verse 8. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. 
And God said unto Abraham, there, you are, there it is, the speaker and his audience. God said unto Abraham, what did he say unto Abraham? Thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generation, this is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Your children, keep this covenant. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Amen? And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. After an eight day old baby, that baby need to get circumcised according to the covenant that God set with Abraham. Amen? So after eight days, you need to circumcise this boy Every man child in your generation circumcise your boys after eight days, according to the covenant that God made with Abraham. He that is born in your house, the one that is born in the house, are bought with money of any stranger. If it's a foreigner, you buy him with money. He come in as a servant to work for you. All your servants, all your employees need to be circumcised. Amen? Which is not of thy seed. Even though he wasn't born by you, he not one of yours, you still need to circumcise him. Amen? Watch this. Verse 13. He that is born in the house, he that is bought with the money, must needs be what? Circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, if he is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Amen. Now, let's run back over to the book of Colossians. Amen. So even though we see here, we saw there in the book of Genesis, that even though it was physical, even though it was physical, it still has spiritual significance. Because God was saying, as you cut away this foreskin, it's going to be a, a token that you are my people, that we got a covenant with each other, that we got a bond. It's just an outward showing that you and me got a covenant with each other, that I am your God and you are my people. Hmm. So it has spiritual significance. But the idea was for the people to have a nearness to God. God always wanted Abraham, his descendants, the Jews, the Hebrew, Israel, the Israelite. He always wanted to have a close relationship with his people. Good morning if you're just logging in. God always wants to have a close relationship. He always wants to be in covenant with his people. That is what is of primary, that is important. That God has a relationship with his people. Okay? That was a problem. And he constantly says it. I'm going to give you some scriptures right quick. Write this down. Or put it in your margins. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 16. While you pull it up, I'm going to tell you what it says. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 16 says, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart. Mm, come on, somebody. Circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. I want to have a relationship with you. This foreskin cutting he was talking about over in Genesis chapter 17, that's just a symbol, a sign, a token of what I want to have with your heart. And what I want you to do is I want you to circumcise the foreskin of your heart according to Deuteronomy 10, 16. Deuteronomy, write this one down. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Now listen at that closely. The Lord thy God will circumcise 
thine heart and the heart of thy seed. Now that's prophetic word, so you need to listen. Catch that. God going to do this. He going to circumcise your heart and your seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. Mm, that's prophetic. That's prophetic. It's coming. Amen. Jeremiah. Here's another one for you. Jeremiah 4 and 4. I'm telling you, the whole idea behind the token of circumcision so that God can have a close relationship with his people. That's what this is about. I want to be in a community with you. Watch this. Jeremiah 4 and 4 says, circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. And take away the foreskin of your heart. Ye men of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire. And I burn you with a fire that can't be quenched because of the evil of your doing. Amen. So this thing is all about having a closeness to God. The mere physical ritual of circumcision. Mm, it never satisfied the spiritual need that was going on in the heart. There was a spiritual need of the heart to come close to God and the physical never got it done. So that's why verse 11 says, in whom, the in whom is in him. Remember now in verse 10, in verse 10, when I taught you verse 10 last week, remember in verse 10, I told you that Christ came up and filled all that we are up. So we became complete in him. We became perfect in him. We became mature in Christ Jesus. That's how we came, became more like him because he was the one who came in. That's that whole prophetic word out of the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 that I'm going to come in and I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's already getting good to me, y'all. Listen, here's, here's what he said in verse 11. In whom or in him also you are circumcised with a circumcision or with the circumcision, not a, but the circumcision made without any hands. Lord have mercy. I'm already getting excited about this. Circumcision. Let me tell you what circumcision means. Circumcision means to cut it away, man, to cut around it, to cut it off, to cut it out. Cut around, cut off, cut it out. Tell somebody you need to cut it out. Ooh, bless the Lord. Cut it out. God is cutting around you so he can cut some stuff off of you because he wants to cut sin out of you. Mm. He's cutting around you to cut some stuff off of you because he want to cut sin out of you. Let me tell you, here's what I always say. Word explains word, all right? What I'm saying by word explains word, I'm just telling you. Every piece of, a good piece of meat will make its own gravy. Let's go somewhere with me. Come on, y'all go over to the book of Romans. Go to book of Romans, chapter 2. Book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 25 through 29. Y'all ready? Let's go. R Romans, chapter 2. Romans, chapter 2, verses 29 through 25. Now, you have it? Amen? Everybody got it? Praise the Lord. Mm, this is good right here, y'all. Now, the, uh, verse 25, Romans chapter 2, verse 25. He says, let me just, let me just, let me just, mm, mm, mm. I just got to get over here because I love this particular passage of scripture. I love this particular passage of scripture. This right here, bless me. Amen? This right here, Bless me, and I believe it's going to bless you. Mm, 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 mm. So he started off by saying this. For circumcision verily profited. What does that mean, Pastor? What he's telling you is circumcision truly does. That word verily means truly. That word verily means truly. It truly profited. That means it has some benefit. It does some good. Amen? Circumcision, it does do some good. That's what he's saying right here. How does it do good? Watch this next part of this verse. If thou keep the law. Yeah. This is a benefit. If you keep the law. Watch this. But if thou be a breaker of the law. The, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. 
If you break that law, your circumcision ain't no circumcision at all. You ain't been cut off. You ain't been cut around. You ain't been cutting. You ain't cutting it out. <laughs> Listen, verse 26. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law. Now listen closely to what he's saying. Shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? This is what he's saying, brothers and sisters. Let me remix that for you. So if a person which is not circumcised, which is not under that covenant with Abraham, if that person does what is required by God under that same covenant, if that person does that same thing declared in the law, they ain't under the law, but they living like that. If this same person right here is under, under God's ordinances and his command, if that person is keeping that thing, then God has got to treat that same person as though God is cutting around him, cutting stuff off of him, and cutting sin out of him. You still got to treat him like that. Why? Because he's living like it. Verse 27. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. Now, what am I? What is the Bible saying? Though? Let me tell you what the Word of God is saying right there. He's saying, so then the ones who are not physically circumcised, who not circumcised physically, but yet instead they keep the laws, the precepts, and the commands of God, but they ain't been circumcised. But I'm still honoring God's Word. Amen. They will be the judges of those who are under the covenant who are circumcised, who are, mm, my God, mm, even, here's why, even though you have the oracles of God, this is what he's saying, he's talking, talking to Jews, Israel, all of those who feel like, hey, I'm living, on, I'm living this law because I'm doing it outside. He said, even though God has already given you the oracles of God, even though you're already physically circumcised, yet you are disqualified because you are a violator of, of the law. Yes, you broke the law of God. Because though you... Mm, verse 28. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. Verse 29. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the... Day, I just got through telling you that circumcision is that of the heart. It's of the heart. Watch this. In the spirit. And it's not of the letter. You doing all this? You doing all that? Doing? No, man. What's in your heart? Huh? This thing. So Paul writes that God doesn't just want your parts. He wants your heart. Somebody ought to say Amen. The writer lets us know that God has just gotten flat out tired of people running around here playing the role, playing the part that God was looking for somebody that's really got heart. Can I ask you a question? Do you have heart this morning? Has God got your heart this morning? Lord have mercy. I'm going on. I'm going on. Listen. So then the second part of that same verse says this. Here's how it happened. In putting off of the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. I'm putting off. Good morning. Good morning if you're joining. Good morning. I'm putting off the body of sins of the flesh. I'm putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Jesus Christ. I'm putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Jesus Christ. Here it is. It is by the circumcision of Jesus Christ that the sins of the flesh are rendered inoperative. Oh, my God, my God. It's being a cut around. It's being cutting some stuff off so we can cut it out. Because mm -hmm. the flesh rebels against the things of the spirit. I said the flesh is a rebel and it rebels against the things of the spirit. Amen. That's what the flesh does. And that, uh, see, let me tell you something. The old man, that old man is gradually corrupted by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, 
and the pride of life. Mm, I'm going to say amen. Amen. He is corrupted by it. 1 John 2 and 16. He is constantly being gradually and gradually. It's infecting him. It's infesting him. And therefore his circumcision is uncircumcision. Why? Because that sin is constantly corrupting him. And he have not turned his heart back to God. He may be playing a part, but he sure ain't got no heart. Mm -hmm. Help me up in here, Holy Ghost. Listen, man. And putting off this body of the sins of the flesh, and not just the body, but the sins of the flesh. Not just body, but of the sins of the flesh. Because the body itself really is not necessarily bad. And, and we're going to go through that. Amen. The body is not necessarily bad. And that body is going to be resurrected in a resurrected body. That body gonna come back like Jesus come back. But I ain't gonna get stuck right there because I can go, I can stay there for a while. But we're gonna talk about that at a later date. Amen. But let me tell you something. So the, it ain't that the body is necessarily bad. By the circumcision of Jesus Christ, by the circumcision of Jesus Christ, the body becomes the temple of the living God. I said by the circumcision of Jesus Christ, your body becomes the temple of the living God. By the circumcision of the body of Jesus Christ, your body becomes the dwelling place for the Holy Ghost. By the circumcision of Jesus Christ, your body becomes a member of the many-membered body of Jesus Christ. By the circumcision of Jesus Christ. And that's why we got to take off all of that flesh, that sinful flesh of that body. Get it out of there. Hmm? Hmm? What needs to be done here? What needs to be is there needs to be a put off. There needs to be a cut off. There needs to be a cut out of the sins of the flesh. And we all got it. So we we speaking to the right crowd right now. We in the right vein. We're in the right place at the right time in the right season. Sin has got to be cut out. Amen. And it can only be done by the circumcision of Jesus Christ. He got to cut it out. Lord have mercy. In the book of Colossians 3 and 9, I just want to let you know. In the book of Colossians 3 and 9, it's called the old man. In the book of Romans 6 and 6, it's called the body of sin. In the book of Romans 7 and 24, it's called the body of death. Let's, listen, listen, I'm getting ready to let you go home, man. Listen. And there's always there's a distinction between the two. There is a distinction between the two. And the and the twain can never meet. Ah, they are different, amen. The pre the, the because of the preeminence of Jesus Christ, he has a better, a greater, and a more significant, amen, circumcision. But that circ old circumcision, it ain't is not it, it will never be able to accomplish what was done through Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, let me run it down to you like this. Under that old circumcision, it was just an external surgery. But under the circumcision of Jesus Christ, it is an internal change of the heart. Under that old circumcision, it just was a removing of a part of the body. But under Jesus, under the preeminence of Christ's uh, circumcision, it is a removing sin from your whole body. Listen, under the old circumcision, it was just done by human hands. But under the, under the preeminence of Christ, this circumcision was done without human hands. It was done in the heavens. It was done through the spirit. It was done by the blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. Up in here somebody. Glory to God. Listen, man, under that old circumcision, I get it. It was good for what it was, but it couldn't never get us to where we needed to be. And we need, ah, Lord, have mercy. So under that old circumcision, there was really no spiritual help to beat off the sins that keep coming to us. The sin that keeps coming in our lives. The sin that keeps rising up. Our transgressions and our iniquities. Our wrongdoing and our sins. Our errors. Those by omission and those by commission. It never could do anything with that. But under, the, under this new circumcision. Under the circumcision of the preeminence of Jesus Christ. There is a spiritual enablement. Where the Holy Ghost comes in. He sets up shop. He said I'm going to take over this domain main and over this dwelling and I'm getting ready to take out some stuff. I, I got to get ready to remove some stuff. I got to start cutting around. Oh yeah, you didn't know a pruning going on in your life and my life. There's some pruning going on and I got to cut out some old stuff because I, I got some new stuff I'm got, I got to bring in. I got to 
to cut the old stuff out. I got to remove this old stuff. I got to remove this old sin. You know what? Because I need my, my born again believer. I, de I need this new uh, disciple of Jesus Christ to cut it out. Now tell somebody, you better cut it out. <laughs> Glory to God. Because of the power of Jesus Christ, it enables us to be able to cut it out. No, you ain't doing it by yourself. It was the blood. Wasn't nothing but the blood. Because I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. I was very deeply stained within, and I was sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, he peeled, pulled me up, lifted me. And now so safe am I. Why? It wasn't nothing but the blood of Jesus and his Holy Spirit came. In and now he's setting up temple right in here. And guess what? Sin has got to go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, God bless you. That's my word for the day. Amen. I want you to go out there, love on somebody, mother. Love on your mother, some of your cousin, mother, your mama, mother, your mothers, your mothers, who are Love on your mothers, amen. Give them some love. Call them up. Talk to them. Share with them. If you can, go by and see them, amen. Make sure you do it safely, amen. Bless the name of the risen Lord, amen. Listen, I got to go. That's my time. God bless you. I want to pray for you before I let you go, amen so that the circumcision of Jesus Christ can cut it out. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now for such an awesome and amazing and a wonderful word right now that you are cutting around us right now, Father, so you can cut some stuff out of us, uh, so we can cut some stuff off of us, so we can cut it out right now, Father God, because you have come and we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly, Lord. Lord, I'm praying right now, Father God, that because of the circumcision of Jesus Christ, Lord, our hearts have been cut, sin have been cut out of our hearts right now, Father God. Lord, so that anything we do is done to the glory and to the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, I bless your name right now, Father God, that Satan and sin and iniquity no longer reigns in our heart, God, but that the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God is sitting on the throne in our hearts and we are living a life according to holiness and godliness, Lord. I bless your mighty name right now today, Father. Bless all those who are listening right now, Father, have your way over them. Clean them up. Turn them around, Lord God. Cut it out in Jesus' mighty name right now, Father God. Lord, and we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the risen Lord. Listen, y'all know me. I don't like to break no fellowship without giving a person an opportunity to get to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's what this thing is all about. Because one of these days, guess what? He's going to crack the sky and he's going to come back. And when he come back, he's going to come back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Man, and you got to be ready. So this is your opportunity, man. This your time. This your moment. This your day. You didn't just stumble up on this page. You were led here by the Holy Ghost. The Spirit led you this way, amen? And so I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you right now today. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you better come on over here, amen? You better get this circumcision in your heart, amen? Because that outward circumcision don't mean nothing. You better come on over here where you can get the circumcision that can take sin away, all right? Listen, man, let me tell you how to get this thing because the Bible says to us that every one of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us have committed iniquities. Every one of us have committed transgressions. We've been hurt and we done hurt somebody. Somebody ought to say amen. You know the truth is right. We done did it. And because of that, guess what? We have all violated the laws of God. Every last one of us. Everyone, but here what I and the problem with even of it is this, brothers and sisters. Even God said, Listen, because you done sinned against me, the wages of sin is debt, the compensation for sin is debt. This I gotta pay call because you have sinned against me, you are standing now in judgment, amen. And I'm gonna have to judge you. But here's what I'm gonna do for you. Here's what I'm gonna do for you. God said, Listen, I'm a judge, I ought to be executing judgment. But my love, my grace, my mercy want me to give you another chance. Listen, that's why you stumble up on this today, to get that second chance. That's why you're here, man. The Bible said, but the gift of God. God said, I'm going to give you a gift. You didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. You ain't got enough money to pay for it, but I'm going to give it to you. 
I'm going to give you the gift of eternal life through my son, Jesus Christ. Why don't you receive the gift today? Pastor, I don't know. Well, let me tell you how to get the gift then. According to the book of John 3.16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, that believe is a big word, man. That's a big word because it means I put my trust, my confidence, my dependence, my reliance upon his son, Jesus Christ. And here's what he I let him come in and circumcise my heart. He takes out the sins of the flesh of the body and he puts in the love of God. He puts in the Holy Spirit. He comes in and he transformed and he changed me. So now I look more like him. And if you do that, the Bible says you will have eternal life. I wanted you to get that today. If you ain't made Jesus the Lord of your life, that's been your invitation. That's been your welcome. I don't know what you're waiting on. Because time is short. Amen. God bless you. We love you so much. Y'all keep staying with the Lord. And y'all know what I say. My motto is always, you better go with God. Because God has always gone with you. I love you, family. Happy Mother's Day. And I'm out.